Hello. I will keep talking about the Project Manager plugin. This review will be about the interface of the possibilities of the plugin in terms of controlling the scene. After the plugin is installed, there is a separate menu with access to the plugin, additional features and utilities. The menu content is usual, information, activation, lessons access, the list of shortcuts. I want to highlight the ability to import and export settings. This is necessary in the case of Force Majeure, associated with reinstalling Windows, 3D's Max, or moving to a new computer. Generally, this is a backup, which in two clicks will restore the directory system of my content. That is why I do not mind the time spent on systemization. I can always restore the results of the work done. At one time, I organized a file server on which I store all the content. Working projects, models, textures, and all this is stored, let's say, stationary. And thanks to the large amount of disk space, I have a fixed folder system. Therefore, when a working machine breaks down, recovery is quick and comfortable. After reinstalling Windows, 3D's Max, and installing necessary plugins, I restore the Project Manager directory system from a previously saved backup. And since the content is stored in an independent source, I have no problems with the path to the models and textures. No relinking through the utility, batch relink is necessary. Therefore, I quickly get back in operation. The main thing is to remember that it's better to save backup, not in the Windows user folder, in which installations of many programs are stored locally, but on a USB flash drive or independent hard disk. File menu. This menu is variable and may vary in small details depending on the type of open content. Now I will describe this menu on the example of an open directory with 3D models. File menu is duplicated in the right-click context menu. The rename option allows you to simultaneously rename both the 3D's Max file and the preview to it. Here you can clearly see how it worked on the example of the catalog models plus models. Next comes a set of standard functions. Copy, cut, paste. Thanks to this, I can separate them thematically. Divided content using the appropriate directory without leaving the 3D's Max workspace. Naturally, file transfer occurs physically and they change their location on the local disk. Delete from hard drive is the physical deletion of files from the hard disk. Add Remove Favorites adds the selected content to your favorites. This function can be used to select content for the current project. For example, we can make a selection of chairs from different folders, adding them to the favorites. Then there is another model, and thus a temporary library is formed. Making the selection, it's easier to decide when all options are in the same visual field. Ordinary users don't have such pleasure when they simply surf through the Windows Explorer. Open with associated application, open with associated application. Any file in the Project Manager can be opened in the software that supports the format of the selected file. This is especially true for textures that can be opened in Photoshop or in the software that is tied to this format without leaving the 3D's Max window. As a rule, all standard formats are tied to viewers. So there is an additional option with choosing the right software for the opening. Through the option, 
Open in Material Map Browser, I can open the shades to the model and then save them as a library of materials. In practice, I don't use this option often, but sometimes this is more convenient when you need to get a nicer shader off a model and work with it. For example, this model. A library for this model has opened in the Materials Browser. View Image. View previews in a separate window of the 3D Max Image Viewer. The next great option is Replace Selection. This option allows you to replace one model with another in a couple of clicks. The practical usefulness of this tool is enormous in terms of saving time. Selecting the necessary objects in the scene in two clicks, I replace them with others from the Project Manager directory. It works like this. There is some object in the scene and I can replace it with an object from the directory. Everything is very simple. I can replace these objects with other objects. If you select the All Instance option, all instance objects in the scene will be replaced, whether they are selected or not. If the option Selection Only is selected, only selected objects will be replaced. If I can activate the option Keep Selection, then the target object will also remain in the scene. If I turn off the Reset Pivot, if I turn off the Reset Pivot option, then the objects will be placed in the scene without being tied to the pivot on the original object. Then there are options Merge and Export to. Everything is clear here. These are standard options. They are just brought to a separate menu. Custom Menu. This is the section where you can expand the functionality of the Project Manager and additional custom scripts. For example, now in this menu, it is possible to use the utility to draw geometry over the surface. But you can add your own scripts to work with this or that type of content and access them through this section of the menu. Manage Asset Files opens a functional window where you can see the status of texture files for the selected model. In this window, some of the functions, batch, render, and relink utilities are implemented. I can locally for one model find, collect, or relink files without actually opening them in 3D's Max we see that the textures of the models have the found status. That is, 3D Max has determined that the textures are somewhere, but the exact folder is not specified in the path and therefore, if I send the task to the network rendering, there is a high probability of these textures will not be picked up by other computers. To correct a situation, just press start. That's it. 
Since both the model and the textures were in the same folder, an instant relinking occurs. At the same time, neither the model nor any additional actions with 3D's Max were necessary. Everything took place in a separate window. Now click Apply Changes and Close. That's it. The status is not changed. The status is OK, unlike other models. Thus, it is possible to locally make a quick relinking if the texture files are next to each other. In the same directory or subdirectory with the model, and the main thing is to click the Apply Changes and Close button. Thumbnail. Rendering previews for a particular model or sending this task to the Batch Render and Relink utility. I will not talk about this option. In the last review, everything was already told. And the last two options, Windows Explorer menu shows the standard Windows Explorer menu and you can perform with the selected model all actions that you would do in Windows Explorer. Reveal in Windows Explorer. This option opens the model folder. Tools menu. In the Tools menu, there are four options. Generate PDF, Place Options Tool, Batch Render and Relink, and Refresh option. Generate PDF is a tool to generate PDF files. This feature may be needed to interact with the client, especially for custom models. If necessary, I generate a PDF catalog with the necessary content and send it to the customer so that he forms his sample for the project. For example, pillows. It is possible to choose the name of the document. It is possible to select the bottom text, but this is optional. And mark the number of columns that will be generated in the PDF file and press the generation button. Click Save. By default, the file will be generated in the same folder as the model. Click Save. The catalog is formed fast and at the same time the file name is attached to each picture, which allows you to quickly make a selection and make a list with designated file names. Place Object Tool, simply said, a drawing tool. The functionality is simple and intuitive. Then there are options, Display as Box. Paint on painted objects. Next, the placement mode. Use standard 3D's Max settings for drawings, or just by mouse click. Here we select the option how the object will be placed, either to draw on the selected objects, or on all the objects in the scene, or on viewport grid. And the distribution mode, Instance or Copy. Here is the Object Selection menu. Here is the Distribution Mode. Taking into account the Normal or Smart Mode. Click Start. That's it. By mouse click, the object appears. It allows you to place it exactly in the right place. Well, if we consider that there is not a pillow, but a stone, then in Manual Mode, you can arrange the stones. And if we choose the 3D Max mode, then the objects will be drawn.
The next tool is the Tools tab. Batch Render and Relink. No comments here. Watch the first review. Well, Refresh is an update or files in the directory. Customize section. As a part of the review, I will open only the section preferences. In this section, you can customize specific functions that control various options. For example, how to open the scene selected in the project manager. Various settings. Now it makes no sense to talk about each setting. Everything is intuitive here. For example, opening the scene in 3D Max. You can choose to open through the dialog menu with the right to choose either to make the default opening or in the new 3D Max. Or the scene will by default open already in the active window. There are also options of error protection. Disabling the delete function in the menu. Some functions are synchronous with the batch and render relink. Also the material editor. Backups, relink and collect options. Everything is synchronized and if you charge something in batch render and relink, here everything will also change. That's it. It is one single system. As a rule, I rarely feel the need to change something in the interface or in the default options, so this tab is not very popular with me. Asset Files In the Asset Files section, I get through the change of the Active tab in the Project Manager itself. By default, the Explorer tab is open. We can switch to Asset Files tab. At the moment, there is nothing here. But if I open the scene, then this section will contain information about the textures and the other files associated with the scene. Asset Files is a functionality similar to Asset Tracking, a standard 3D Max utility, but with greater capabilities for working with scene files. On the example of the following scene, I will consider the functionality of this section. When opening another scene, relinking files is always a relevant question. The basic functions of the standard 3D's Max Asset Tracking are enough to solve this problem, but all this happens in manual mode, with a return to Windows Explorer and so on. Asset Files solves this problem much easier and faster by pressing the Start button. If the textures are located nearby, that is, in the same folder or subfolder as the scene, then there will be no problems for searching and relinking it is enough to press the Start button. If the situation is complicated by the lack of textures near the scene, then the standard means of Max will not solve it. Through Asset Files, I can find missing files, create additional search paths, and so on. The functionality is similar to the Batch Render and Relink utility discussed in the last review. But the interface of the section is not limited to this. The first thing I want to mention is visual convenience, namely the presence of a review, which greatly simplifies working with scene files. I will not consider the tabs at the top, since the main file tab is the same as the context menu the Quick Access button is to the application which allows you to open the selected file in any Windows application installed and suitable for this purpose. For textures, the most relevant, as I said earlier, is Photoshop. You can also reassign and select the appropriate software for your purpose.
The selected option will be saved in memory. and will continue to open without additional Open With settings. Next are the buttons Place Material to the Material Editor. You can open the material in which the selected textures are used, which is also convenient. That is, when you need to understand where, what, and how it is always important in somebody's scene. You can open and this texture will be opened along with the material in the matte editor. And accordingly, you can correct this material. Get rid of duplicates, etc. The following option places the selected texture directly in the material editor. And the option Select Objects allows you to select the object on which the texture is used. Now I will minimize the window. Well, that's obvious. That is any texture. Any. And this applies not only to the texture, this also applies to the IES files. That is, select the option, and all the IES files are highlighted. Select the option, and the object on which this texture is used is highlighted. A very convenient functionality to control what is happening in this scene and with this scene. In the same panel, there are options for displaying previews and sorting files. Sorting by name, folder, size, file type, and display mode. Now let's talk about the context menu that we get by clicking on the selected file. Rename link and rename link in file options. The first option allows you to rename the link while the original texture file remains unchanged. It is complicated to present the situation with this option. Probably, in the process of working on a 3D model's texture, several versions of a single with a serial number are created. Then you can quickly replace the texture by replacing its name. How it works? For example, I will open it now. I create a copy and in Photoshop I will somehow edit it. Let's give it a new serial number. And in order to swap these two textures, simply rename the link. OK, it happened automatically.
the following option is even more useful, especially for me. Through the Rename Link in File option, I can replace the texture file name with simultaneous relinking by a new name. It is very cool. How it works. Let's select and give it a name. It can be called by the name of the scene. Scene 16. Texture 001. And click the Enter button. The texture was renamed and it was also renamed here. It is very, very convenient. You can rename any file with the problem name. And everything will be relinked and renamed at the hard disk too. Next, the Set Path and Strip Path options allow you to manually set the file path or clear the path. Strip Path clears the path and leaves only the name. The Set Path option allows you to assign this path. And looking ahead, the option removes links from scene, which is slightly lower. I would move it closer to the option Set Path and Strip Path, because it also works with textures and scene files. That is, those links that we lack in the scene we can delete through Remove Links from Scene. And these links are simply removed from that material, if they were in some material, or from an object if they were used on an object. No trace of these links remains. Next, the Copy option allows you to copy the file and paste it in another location, both in the Project Manager and in the Windows Explorer. Copy allows you to copy the file to the desired location through the dialog menu. Here I copy a texture file. I go to the Project Manager, Texture Section, and let's say I paste it here. Here is a Paste option. Well, respectively, this file appears in the Windows folder. The Copy To option opens a dialog window that allows you to choose the path of saving through Windows Explorer. I talked about View Image already. It shows the file in the viewer. Select Object duplicates the function from the top panel and selects the object with a given texture in the scene. This scene is standard and implemented in the 3D Max Materials Editor, but the presence of everything you need in one window makes using the Asset Files more convenient. The following options are also implemented in 3D Max, but again, God knows where. I am now talking about the options Show Map in Viewport and Disable Map in Viewport. We can disable the demonstration. or do it globally. I don't use them often, as I said. 
sometimes in cases when the scene is very heavy and I need to free the viewport from textures, thereby freeing up video memory. Remove links from scene. This option removes unnecessary or lost links of the scene, and messages about lost links no longer bother you when opening the scene. And the last two options, I have used them already. The first option, Browse in Project Manager Explorer, opens the directory in Project Manager Explorer. If this is a texture, then a tab with textures will open. If this is an IES file, then a section for working with IES files will open. And this file will be shown with additional features that are implemented in this section. And if this is a texture, it will open here and also give the possibility of the additional use of the functional options of this section. View Filter Panel in this panel, you can see the status of all scene files. Missing, found, and with the OK status. If missing and OK are clear, then the status found can be misleading for beginners. 3D's Max is able to find links in nearby directories, but as a rule, there are files in the same folder with the scene or in a subfolder which does not always guarantee that these textures will be found during network or distributive rendering because the exact path is not fixed or stored in the scene. The found status can be ignored if the work is being conducted within one local computer. The selection button allows you to filter the display of the textures by the selected object. It is very convenient when you need to understand which textures, materials, or IES files are involved in the object. Let's say we select a chandelier and turn on the selection option. You can immediately see what material is used in the chandelier. Select the chair and it shows which material, or rather what texture is used in the chair, and so on. A very cool thing, I think. Next, the file type option allows you to filter the list by file types. In this scene, we have quite a limited range. There are only IES and texture files. When deactivating the JPEG checkbox, we only have the IES file. It is very, very great. And finally, about the parameters. These parameters are part of the functions of the Batch Render and Relink utility, and I talked about them in the first review. Have fast renderings. Bye.